What do we have in life besides uh, our own self? But what is a self? Philosophers from time immemorial tried to define the self. Psychologists tried to understand it. Eastern theories tried to fulfill the self. And like here, the most fundamental aspect of the self is actually our body. I will try to approach the self and to explain it through the very organ who creates it, and this is the brain. To this aim, I would like to tell you a story of a patient of mine. The patient, when she was a child, started to have a vision of somebody who is standing next to her, speaking to her. Her parents brought her to local rabbis, who say that actually she is blessed. Later on, these experiences started to follow by full epileptic seizures. And then it was understood that actually what she has is not vision or a blessing, but actually epilepsy. And the experiences were what that we call an aura. An aura is an activity, an electrical activity within the brain that creates an experience that later follows by a full-blown seizure. Auras are actually a window to the very essence of the brain and mind, and that's why I would like to deepen with you into one of her experiences. And she describes it like that she sees a face, and this face of a person who is speaking to her, sometimes mocking at her, when we asked her to describe more in details her experiences, so she said that this person is actually her age, her height, her looking, her ethnicity. Even this person has long hair, exactly like hers, in same color, same length. This and more actually convinced us that what that this patient see is not else but her own body projected into the extrapersonal space. In order to better understand and to prove that it's actually a focal epilepsy, we did a PET scan. In PET scan, what that we do, we inject a very weak radioactive agent and then we scan the brain and we see functions and dysfunctions. And what that we saw with this patient that there is a dysfunction of her brain in this region here, what that we call the temporal parietal junction. When I saw this image, I said, wow, bingo. And I'll tell you why. Because she was supposed to have a problem with her body. And that mostly is localized to another region in the brain, which is the extrastriate body area, the EBA. But actually what that she had is not a problem of the body or the body image but a problem of localizing herself into her body. And this is something else. This is related to the self, to the very essence of ourselves. To better understand what is a self and what's the role of the TPJ in this self, we did several experiments. I will present two of them. In one experiment, we showed participants with images of themselves from different time points. And we asked them to elaborate on the experiences that they had at this time point. In the same time, we scanned their brain with functional MRI. And then we discovered that the brain region that is correlated with the time elapsed from the situation to the present time is actually this TPJ. So the TPJ is active in managing our relations to different situations. In order to be more precise, we use the most um, exact and precise methods that we have nowadays in neuroscience to record brain activity directly from the human brain. This is done in patients with epilepsy, that from strict clinical reasons we have to open the brain, implant electrodes directly inside the brain, the brain and on the surface of the brain, and in the same time, when we record brain activity, we can also ask them to perform cognitive and mental tasks and keep recording. So what that you see here is the surface of the brain and electrodes that are placed on the brain. And here, when we asked the 
patient to imagine themselves in different times or in different places, we saw activity in the same brain mechanism, in the temporal parietal junction, the TPJ. But as you can see here, is that the TPJ is active both for different places and also for different times. Moreover, you see that the TPJ is active not only when the patients imagine in other places or in other times, but also when they imagine the here and now. So, what can we learn from this? We can learn that there is a brain mechanism that is necessary to localize ourselves inside our body to the human now, and the very same mechanism also enables us to localize ourselves to in other places, which is actually necessary because we have to always to imagine what happens if I stand here, and what happens if I stand here, and what will happen in very many different future opportunities. This also explains our patient. The patient actually had a problem in the temporal parietal junction, and that's why she localized herself not into her body, but to an outer possible body. One of the main readers or open questions in the neuroscience is what the brain does when it does actually nothing. In brain scanning, we can measure and find that the brain is much more active when we do nothing. We call it the dark energy of the brain. But what the brain does with all of this energy? So what that I propose is that actually what the brain does is simulations. It simulates very many options, very many opportunities, very many futures, very many possible futures. It has an evolutionary gain, and we can really have to know what happened in the past and to learn what will be in the future and to simulate and to imagine all this not only in space and time, but also in very many other dimensions. Like, for example, in emotions, we can be happier or less. In our social life, we can be kinder to people or less. In morality, we can do better things or less. All these are open. All of these possibilities exist in our brain. We just have to choose and to fulfill them. When we do so, that's become ourself. And this brings us to the question that opened our conversation. What is a self? What that would like to claim is that actually there is not only one self. There are very many potential selves all over these dimensions. They exist. They are there. They are in the brain. We can just choose to be these selves. All of these opportunities, all of these possibilities, they may be us. We just have to choose. Mostly, we follow our permanent patterns of behavior. But we can be a better self. Are we brave enough to be this brave new self? Thank you. <laughs>